In this section, we're going to take a look at a bunch of miscellaneous logarithm and exponential equations. Uh, so it'll just be a variety of different things, and, and we take advantage of uh, some of the things we learned in previous sections, including all of the properties of logs. So to get started with the first one, uh, you can see that we have log base 9 plus log base 9 equals 1. Now, uh, again, we'll go ahead and, and take advantage of our logarithmic properties here. Uh, when you have a log base 9 plus a log base 9, uh, that's, that can be uh, combined or condensed down to a single log using the product rule. Uh, so that's going to be log base 9 of x minus 7 times x minus 7 equals 1. Uh, I'll go ahead and clean up the inside of that log. That'll be an x squared minus 14x plus 49 equals 1. In which case, uh, we're now in logarithmic form, and uh, it makes sense now to convert into exponential form and to be able to solve this thing for x. So going into exponential form, we have 9 to the first equals the inside of x squared minus 14x plus 49. Uh, which is a quadratic equation now, so I'll, we'll go ahead and try to factor it. Uh, 0 equals x squared minus 14x plus 40. If I subtract 9 from both sides, I get the plus 40. And it does look like this thing factors. Uh, we've got an x minus 10 and an x minus 4, in which case now we can see that x would equal 10 and x would equal 4. Now, if you remember back to some of the earlier problems we worked, uh, we do have to be a little bit careful with the solutions of logarithmic equations. Uh, we have to make sure the quantity that sits inside these parentheses here is always bigger than zero, always positive. So even though our x values are positive, uh, you can notice that if I take this x equals 4 and I plug it in, for example, we would get a log base 9 now of negative 3. Uh, which we can't take the log of a negative number. So this solution has to be thrown out, and our only answer to this logarithmic equation is x equals 10. Now in our next example, uh, we'll look at a natural log equals another natural log minus a natural log. Um, one of the most common mistakes that I see on problems like this uh, will be when students see all the natural logs and they, and they want to take advantage of the one-to-one -one property, so they just come up here and they mark out all the natural logs and they say that the x has to equal the 2 minus the x minus 2. Uh, but we know that that's not the case because we looked into that one-to-one -one property so carefully uh, the other day. Uh, the one-to-one -one property actually says a couple things. It says that if you have one single log equals one single log with the same base, then you can ignore the logs and work with the insides. Uh, but that's not what we have here. Uh, so to take advantage of the one-to-one -one property, I'm going to go ahead and use the properties of logs. Uh, on the right-hand side, a log minus a log would give us a quotient now of the natural log of 2 over x minus 2. Uh, which case now we do have one single log base e equals one single log base e so we can ignore the logarithms and now focus just on the insides being set equal to one another so once we have gotten rid of the logs now it's just a basic algebraic equation um, i'll go ahead and i'll multiply both sides by x minus two i'll distribute the x once again we have a quadratic equation so x squared minus 2x minus 2 equals 0. Uh, I want to see if this factors first. Um, it doesn't look like that it factors. So now I'll have to use either the completing the square method or quadratic formula. Um, I'll go ahead and complete the square uh, up over on the next side of the screen. Uh, x squared minus 2x. Put a blank in. I'll move the 2 over. So half of 2 would be 1, and I square it. If I put a 1 on the left to keep it balanced, I need to put a 1 on the right. Now the left side is ready to be factored, and the right side gives us a 3. Now we can square root both sides. In putting the square root on your paper, you also now need to remember the plus or minus has to come with it. Finally, if we add 1 to both sides, we end up with x equals 1 plus or minus root 3. Now, again, it's a logarithmic equation, so we have to make sure that, that what's inside these parentheses uh, is only positive. 
And here it's a little diff more difficult to see, but just with some simple approximation, we might be able to draw a conclusion. Um, the square root of three is approximately one point something. So if I take one minus one point something, that is gonna give me a number that's less than zero. Uh, so I would wanna make sure to exclude the negative. Uh, one plus root three uh, will keep us positive so we can accept that as a final answer. So another one where we had to double check to make sure what was in parentheses of our logarithms uh, was, was, was gonna be positive. So in our last equation uh, that we're going to solve in this section, um, we've got an exponential equation. Uh, and you want to remember the easiest way to solve exponential equations would be to get the bases to be the same. Uh, but that doesn't look to be the case here, so um, we're going to have to use logarithms to, to uh, help us get this thing solved. Now, <clears throat> to introduce logarithms uh, is actually, again, going to take advantage of a property that we studied the other day. Um, if I go ahead and I log both sides... Of this equation uh, and it doesn't matter the log that you pick as long as it's the same on both sides now we can take these exponents and we can bring them down in front uh, so this would give us x natural log 2 equals x minus 3 natural log of 5 and, and make sure you have the, the parentheses around the x minus 3 now we're still we're still trying to solve for x and we have to remember, natural log of 5, while it might look a little crazy, uh, it's just a constant. It's just a number. Uh, so I'm actually going to go ahead and distribute that constant into both of those. So x natural log 2 equals x natural log 5 minus 3 natural log 5. So to get x all by itself now, we want to get all of the x's on the same side. So I'll go ahead and subtract the x natural log 5 and now on the left hand side we have two terms both of which have the x in it which we can now factor out so once I factor it out now it's just a matter of dividing off the rest uh, that we don't want um, one other thing, though, that we should probably do before we actually divide it off uh, is we can take advantage again of a log minus a log uh, in the quotient rule. Uh, so here, this could be a natural log of 2 over 5. And now, when we divide both sides by the natural log of 2 fifths, we end up with x all by itself. And even though the answer is going to look kind of messy, uh, it's a, still an exact answer, uh, and it's uh, the correct answer to the problem. So we divided off the natural log of 2 fifths. So uh, we have an x equal negative uh, 3 natural log 5 over natural log 2 fifths. Um, the original equation was an exponential equation where there aren't any real domain restrictions, so um, positive or negative doesn't really matter. Um, I think we've got a good answer.